This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. Ask me why I run, tell you why I run. Say the woman at the door had a dog on shotgun. That is why I run. Now I came home one minute to three. He say who and I say me. He say I got company. I say young man, that is bigger me. That's when I began to shout. If I can't come in, she can't come out. The woman with the gun came through the door. Under my feet, grass grow no more. Ask me why I run. Tell you why I run. Say the woman at the door had a dog on shot. Good a yawning this morning and welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Your station for fresh news, smart talk all day. It is Tuesday, the 30th of November, and you are on the clock with Erin Green. Now, I had to pause there for a moment. After watching the news last night, I thought we went back in time. I wasn't sure what the day is, so I want to say good morning to the Honorable Hiram Lewis and your colleagues on the other side of the floor. Good morning to you all. Once again, I remind you, at any time, you could come and ask me why I run. Y'all seem to keep forgetting the lesson. It's as if you don't understand the assignment. A good morning, good morning, Bahamas. In fact, I'm not going to say good yawning. This morning time has changed and the sun been up a long time. But I will say this. Good morning to the one and only Sawyer Boy. I look here. I, never, I thought we wasn't going to never get married because I couldn't see you again. But I was blessed to see you this morning. I want to say good morning to Sawyer Boy and the whole Sawyer family. It was so great to see you. Also, before we get the show going, I got just a couple of little notes. I want to say good morning to the gentleman that decided to park his truck on Tony Darling Highway so that he could go into an establishment and buy something to eat. I'm not talking about parking on the access road on Tonic Darling Highway, which is not the actual uh, dual carriageway. Four lanes with two heading in each direction. No, he didn't park on the access road. He parked in the middle of the highway. I want to say good morning to you. You know, it seems that you crave attention. And hope, hopefully you receive it soon from the authorities. That is just wild and reckless. It's almost as reckless as, if not more reckless, the driver yesterday morning who attempted and successfully crossed Market Street on a red light. You knew your light was red. You saw traffic passing in front of you from... King Street to Duke Street, but you didn't let that hold you back. You ran the light anyway, because who's going to hold you down? Not no rules, not no laws, not respect and mindfulness for your fellow citizens. You got to succeed at being the best you you could be. And this is the one time that I will tell you, you don't have to try that hard, though. Just pause it for a second. Think about, weigh the balance of you doing what you want to do in the midst of all of us doing what we have to do to stay alive. I had to make that note. We are losing ourselves, Bahamas. In particular, I want us to pay attention to the area near the Guardian on Nassau Street, just north of the roundabout. A number of vagrants hang out in that area, and they've taken to panhandling for money. Now, this wouldn't necessarily be a problem because ooh, everybody got to eat. Everybody got to try and wake something out every day. But some of these men and young men take it upon themselves to badger, pester, and harass the women that are there waiting to purchase their breakfast or waiting for someone on the line. 
the th on the last three occasions that I've been there, I've had the misfortune of witnessing one gentleman in particular harass the female patrons in that area. In fact, he pushed himself less than a foot into the face of a pregnant woman. And in the midst of all of the customers, I was the only person that told him that he needs to reconsider his behavior. And I encountered him yesterday, and as he was about to ask me to give him some money for food, I pointed out to him that there was a man on the side of the road that needed some assistance with his vehicle, and that maybe if he helped him, he would get some breakfast money. The young man proceeded to cuss at me. And then when I explained to him that that is uh, not acceptable, nor will it be tolerated, he began to approach me in an aggressive manner. We have a problem, Bahamas. And the problem is not necessarily that young vagrant that has lost his way. The problem is those of us that continue to stand in these environments and ignore what it is we see in front of us. Those of us that can see clearly what is happening around us, but instead of moderating our own behavior, we continue on doing what suits us. We ignore the needs of the community. Well, this has to stop Bahamas. Now, on another note, I have a lovely text that says, Aaron, stop complaining. That's his section of the road. We're just lucky enough to be allowed to ride on it. So apparently he could park where he wants. Well, see, I could understand why he feel that way. Because every day we watch prominent people, people in power, people with special plates, all manner. Some are red and white, some are dark blue and white. Some are simply a lovely pastel green and white. Some are black and yellow. We watch all of these special cars with special plates do what they want. Some of them look like regular cars, regular plates, until you get very close and you see that AA in the front of them. Some of them like to park on sidewalks in areas where it is impossible to navigate the roadway safely without the sidewalk. Good morning, East Street and Shirley Street intersection. Some of us are churches and church members who feel that our right to serve God is greater than any obligation to the whole or to the rules. Thank you for that text. But I got to get going because I got guests and I got another important thing to talk about. If you look in today's Guardian, you're going to see at the top of the fold, Minnis defends a 150-year lease agreement with RCCL. He says the deal was in the best interest of Bahamians. I honestly don't care. He could have talked about it when he was making the deal. That would have been the best time to talk about it when you were making the deal. You didn't want to talk about it then. When you were in power and you controlled the reins of government, including all of its press and communications mechanisms, you could have talked about it then. But you didn't want to talk to us at all. And I'm not quite sure we're interested in talking to you. Plus, you got some other things you need to talk about before we get there. You see, when the speaker speaks, she speaks. And when she stands, she stands. And yesterday, we saw a perfect opportunity for the Honorable Philip Brave Davis, the Honorable Michael Pintar, or, or, and or the leader of government business in the House of Assembly, and the newly appointed leader of the opposition, to engage their colleagues to commemorate the time of year dedicated to the work of eliminating violence against women and girls and gender-based violence, and to remind them of the authority of the speaker, whether male or female, woman or man. You see, this is why it's important to understand 
Halston Moultrie's critique of the executive and their disregard for the authority of the position of the speaker, the principle of separation of powers, and other constitutional and parliamentary principles. She, the speaker, Honorable Patricia DeVoe, demands respect, not because she is a woman, but because she is the speaker. Though I suspect her honorable colleagues are tempted to push the issue because she is a woman. Case in point, I don't remember hearing any of y'all demanding ministers take the time to explain to the Bahamian people what this 150-year lease agreement was all about. So y'all like to stand up to women. Hard, hard, hard. Y'all don't talk to your boys like that, though. Not at all. Yesterday, a caller reminded us that Michael Pintard is a regular Bahamian man that grew up in Yellow Elder and, like regular Bahamian children, went to public school most of his life. You see, I don't think the average voter is concerned about the speaker's diction and speech. I think they're more concerned about the respect paid to the role she plays as representative of the people. Now, Honorable Member Lewis, I offered you some advice. I told you, you could ask me why I run. Ask me. I tell you, when the woman came to the door, with a doggone shotgun. That is why I run. I would suggest you all heed the word. Anyway, let's get to some text before I transition into the next part of the show. First text says, parking on the highway, Miss Green, that's crazy. Not as crazy as the video of the people towing the SUV in the back of the truck. Like they got a, tr a crane and instead of lifting the vehicle and putting it on a tow truck, they lifted it and put it on the back of a truck and then drove it to its destination. Another text, What's a, what a disappointment, 150 years for pocket change. Yeah man, 80 jobs? 80 jobs in, the constru in construction? For 55 million dollars? Man, you know how much, you know how quickly these by them blow through 55 million dollars? Another text, good morning, Ms. Green, awesome show as always. Collins Avenue heading south as you turn left from Shirley Street. Those vehicles that are parked on the lane heading up Collins Avenue next to Doxus Hospital. The authorities need to stop them from parking there. It's a hindrance to motorists traveling on that southbound lane. Listen, I, as far as I'm concerned, there should be no vehicles parked there right outside the hospital uh, on the hill. Not just that, as you could see how the road is constructed, those vehicles cause drivers to have to put their car in the manhole, which is, uh, with cover, is still about three inches below the surface of the road. I just, I wonder, who is supposed to be enforcing these rules? Another text says, who was that that flew in the speaker's face? Well, the article I read would lead one to infer that it could have been the Honorable Member Lewis. I tell you what, the Honorable Member Gibson have so much other matters on his plate, I couldn't imagine him taking time out to try and establish his authority as a member of the opposition by challenging the speaker. He got too, far too many things on his plate. I just, I just can't understand. How is it that you find the time and the space to challenge the leader of the speaker, but you couldn't even challenge the former leader of your party to resign after a devastating loss at the polls? You didn't just lose votes. You lost voters. Ah, oh boy. One last text. 
The speaker's body language and tone is most inappropriate. Boy, y'all like to tone police. Y'all like to tone police and body police women. But y'all, it's like y'all missed what the speaker said. So the body language of sitting on your laptop on your, and your phone is not inappropriate. Mm. I think it was most appropriate. You're lucky it was not me. I would have shut the whole house down. And you could only come back after you've written your lines that says, I will remember my parliamentary and constitutional principles. I mean, it's either that or I will learn to respect the Bahamian people by respecting the officers that serve them. Either one, either one, either way, however you want it. Last two texts, and I got to go. Morning, Miss Green. Pintard, FNM, FNM. I'm glad I read it. I didn't want to miss you. Good morning, traffic lights obscured by Ponciana trees. Boy, does you think that's the only thing obscuring traffic lights? Dear Ministry of Works. Ministry of Transportation, you can collaborate to make the roads safer place. Pedestrians are impeded on the pavement, climbing Blue Hill to family, guardian. Yeah, people like to park there all the time. I can't imagine that they know Jesus. How could you put your fellow citizens in such a dangerous position? Anyway, I really got to go. We have an exciting show this morning. My guests today are Alicia Wallace and Lauren Glinton from Equality Bahamas, and we're talking about 16 days of activism. And what, a, what it's just very timely, it's so timely, I need my representatives in the house to hear this. But before we get into that segment of the show, Arlington, let's go to that break, and when we get back, we're going to ask some of the important questions. Stay tuned to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. This is On the Clock with Aaron Green. As I was walking down the street one day, I met a pretty lady, she was going my way. I said, lady, would you walk along with me? I'll show you sights of interest. This is my country, like the water tower. And the queen staircase And maybe later We could go to my place She was looking pretty and smiling With me And I think my line is beguiling She Oh She was looking pretty and smiling With me And I think my line is beguiling At this Medellin, is the Guardian home. Radio, 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. At Fidelity, the holidays are all about family, spending time with loved ones, and being thankful for the little things in life. Worrying about bills should be the last thing on your mind, especially during the holidays. Let Fidelity help you get your bills under control. Fidelity can also get you started with a real savings plan that actually pays you interest. The only thing you need to think about is what you will do with the savings in your pocket this Christmas. Now that's what I'm talking about. Fidelity Bank is here for you this holiday season because you are family and family is important to us. The new Guardian Radio app is here. Listen live to all our Guardian Radio shows and live video stream select programs in our studio. Get information about Guardian Radio shows and our hosts. Send messages including text, email, and even call. All from our amazing new Guardian Radio app. Download it free today in your app store for your Apple device or Play Store for your Android device. The all new and improved Guardian Radio app. This is Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Belle, a charming young woman, 
She had a kiss with a young man. Well, a charming young woman. She had a kiss with a young man. She said the man could she up and take she money. So she got a warrant from the JP. Next day the case, well, you want to know. She had the whole courthouse in a uproar. She said, my honor, he kicked me up. They hold him, he wouldn't stop. Murder, I start to ball. But the man wouldn't stop kicking me at all. Good morning and welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. You are on the clock with Erin Green. And that song is called Courthouse Scandal by Maureen Duvalier. And I just want to say to the young people, look here, all everything we learn is, we need to learn is already in our hands. We just got to go find it right there in our own music. These same stories being told over and over again just for us. We just got to go find it. Got to go find it. Anyway, good morning, and I want to say good morning to my guests, Miss Alicia Wallace and Miss Lauren Clinton from Equality Bahamas. Good morning. Morning, Erin. Good morning. How y'all doing? Doing well, thanks. How are you? Good, good. Good, especially in the midst of 16 days of activism. It began on the 25th of November, which is the International Day to Eliminate Violence Against Women. And is, that is also the day before the anniversary of women's suffrage in the Bahamas. 16 Days of Activism also coincides with National Women's Week. Uh, and yesterday was International Women's Human Rights Defenders Day. And 16 Days of Activism ends on December the 10th, which is also Human Rights Day. So Alicia and Lauren, can you tell us briefly about your campaign this year for 16 Days of Activism. The campaign started on Thursday with um, an hour-long session with Ardra Manassi, who is the Global 16 Days Campaign Manager, and we explored the theme Femicide. Mm -hmm. So uh, this year's campaign has two themes, the 30th anniversary theme, which is Femicide, and then uh, violence and uh, eliminating violence in the world of work. So um, our campaign started with that conversation, which was really important for giving us definitions and frameworks to work from. Um, then we had a session on Saturday called Femicide Around the World, and we got to hear from uh, advocates working in different regions of the world. Yesterday, we had a session with Marion Bethel on using CEDAW as a tool to end gender-based violence. Um, and then we have lots of sessions coming up this week that are looking at um, men's role in ending gender-based violence. So we actually have a conversation this evening at 6 um, okay. with Laggy, um, Dominic, and Stephen, who are three men who have, you know, sort of committed to this work, and, and we're really happy to have them join us for that conversation. Laggy, Dominic, and Stephen? Yes. Awesome. So Dominic Duncombe, yeah. Stephen Thompson, and... Um, Laggy is actually joining us from Fiji. Oh, so, wow. Okay. Yeah. So we have some international perspective on this issue. Um, and then tomorrow we're doing a poetry workshop. Um, Thursday, we're looking at community responses to GBV. Saturday is a dance workshop. And then next week, we're rounding out our campaign with um, some sessions on the importance of reporting, fostering a culture of human rights, um, so we're really excited to, you know, be offering this campaign again. Um, it's, an, it's an important part of our work when we talk about advocating for women's rights. That means, you know, living lives free of violence. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so all of these sessions are on Zoom, and we encourage everyone to check out our Instagram and, and Facebook and Twitter accounts, Equality242, um, and you can find all of the, the details there. For, for registration and how to participate in the sessions. And yes. we can participate via Zoom or by the uh, Facebook link, right? Last yes, night I was able to... We, yes, we live stream to Facebook. So you can tune in on Facebook or Zoom. Right. I was unable to register on Zoom in time, so I couldn't ask questions, but I was able to listen while I was preparing dinner and doing some other work around the house. I was able to listen to the sessions, and that was very, very cool. Uh, so... Let me, let the themes this year, femicide and eliminating violence in the world of work, 
Now, I saw a theme, domestic violence at work. Is that one of the themes for this year? Yes, yes. it is. Mm -hmm. So tell there's us. A, there's a multi-year focus that the global campaign is putting on violence in the world of work. Mm -hmm. And that is to align with the campaign to get ILO C-190 or Convention 190 ratified. Right. And that convention is specifically on eliminating violence and harassment in the world of work. So throughout this multi-year focus, it started in 2018 on violence in the world of work. There have been specific themes, and this year it's domestic violence in the world of work. Now, like, what, the, what does that mean? Does that mean that uh, I'm having a problem uh, with my partner and my partner comes on the job to harass me or my co-workers? Or is it a... A is it violence that takes place between myself and somebody else that is in the workplace? So it can include your your partner or your ex partner showing up at work, you know, because you know, in situations of domestic violence, people leave; they can leave temporarily, and the workplace is the most predictable place to find a person. Mm -hmm. So a person who is experiencing domestic violence is at risk in the workplace where their partner knows they can find them. But ILO, that's the International Labor Organization, defines the world of work much more broadly than just the building that your employer has or that you work in. It includes your transportation to and from work. It includes wherever you take your breaks. It includes where you have to go to get paid. Um, all, all of this is included in the world of work. Everything that involves you being able to function right and domestic violence at work also includes cases where a person works within their employer's home so we think about domestic workers and they could be experiencing violence particularly those that live they live in live in housekeepers live in nannies yeah and, and then there's also people who are home-based so you're at work but you're in the place where you're experiencing violence particularly now within the COVID-19 context where so many people are working from home mm -hmm. where they weren't before. Right. And so, like, I understand particularly the disabled community are encouraging employers to maintain the flexibility of uh, the work-at-home platforms, right, for people yes. with mobility challenges, right? This, and this is a good thing. Um, but I also want to say to employers, while your employees are, are working from home, you, you should interrogate or be concerned when an employer an employee has their camera off, not because you think that they're slacking on the job or, oh, they don't want to get dressed properly and so they're going to turn their camera off, but it could be that your employee is a victim of domestic violence. And, and, and having to work from home then means that that situation is, is likely to be more likely to be exposed so they keep their camera off and they keep their mic off so you don't hear anything going on in the background. Um, and that, that's something that employers should be aware of as well, right? Definitely being, being mindful and understanding the reasons that employees might have particular practices or that their practices might suddenly change. Yeah, absolutely. Another thing I thought about was uh, when we talk about the world of work being more than just the workplace, if I'm an employee and I have to go cash my check or I have to go to a, a, a money service, right, like a money transfer service to, to deal with my, to get my pay, you know, I could be on the line for a long time and potentially being harassed by people in the area who know that a lot of women come to this area to, you know, come to this business to, to deal with cash. It, would that be included as well in terms of violence in the workplace? Definitely. It's included specifically in, in um, violence in the world of work because they include the places where you get paid. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so it's not just uh, the employer that, that, that has a responsibility, but it's all of the services and businesses connected to the world of work, like the bus driver, right? Exactly. So what's included specifically are the public and private spaces in the place of work, the places where a worker is paid or takes a rest or a break or, or uses washing and changing facilities, um, spaces that are used during trips and travel and training for work. Um, it also includes work communication mm -hmm. that's enabled by technology. Employer provided accommodation, whether that is 
your your regular circumstance, perhaps because you moved for work mm -hmm. or because you are just working somewhere else temporarily or on a conference. And it also includes commuting to and from work. Right. So now the, the, that te the technical part, the telecommunications part, right? So we're saying like if, if on my job, the group I work with, we have a WhatsApp chat group and somebody has used the chat group to access my number and is messaging me privately right. or is harassing me within the chat group amongst other employees, right? Things like that? Yes, definitely. Absolutely. And so then the, the cyber crimes unit then becomes a part of the, uh, the solutions team, right? They become a part of, of the work as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is awesome. That is awesome. So it, it's me asking all the questions, but I don't know all the things. The definition of femicide, I'm almost certain a lot of people don't know what it means. We've talked about gender-based violence, GBV. We've talked about IPV, which is intimate partner violence. And we talk about domestic violence, DV, and interpersonal conflict. Um, we also talk about different types of violence, like physical, sexual, psychological, emotion, financial, emotional, financial, and spiritual violence. But give us a definition for femicide. Sure. So femicide is the killing of women based on their sex and or gender. So um, let me repeat that. The killing of women based okay. on their sex or their gender. Yes. Okay. So it is a form of gender based violence, but it's important for us to name it as femicide so that the specific responses that are needed to um, eliminate it are sort of able to be, you know, thought about strategically. So um, currently the Bahamas counts you know, all murders as homicides, but in a lot of cases, it is the result of domestic violence that leads to femicide. So femicide actually includes things like intimate partner violence, domestic violence, um, armed conflict, suicide femicide. So this is when um, a woman has been abused or mistreated to the point of taking her own life. That actually counts as suicide femicide. Um, honor killings are considered femicide. So this is when um, a family will kill a woman for bringing dishonor to the family by, you know, marrying outside of their caste in mm -hmm. a South Asian context, for example, or, you know, marrying someone who the family simply doesn't approve of. Um, and then even something like a botched abortion would be considered femicide because, the state has a responsibility to provide access to safe abortions. So if that access is not provided and it results in the death of, of the woman, then that is considered femicide. So it is pretty broad, but that, that broadness actually allows us to capture the various forms of violence that many women experience and ultimately, um, you know, die from. Absolutely. So I got two quick questions. Well, a comment and a question. Um, my favorite town hall comment. Uh, I think it's important to make the distinction uh, of femicide, right? Like in the same way, it's important to make the dis to it's important to call it femicide in the same way that it's important to call the act rape. We like to call rape sexual assault. We like to call it sexual molestation. And our favorite is non-consensual sex. But it's important to call it rape because that's what it is. And I imagine femicide in the same way, it's important to name it in that way. A question, though, from the text line is, okay, so that's the definition of uh, femicide, the killing of women. What do we call the killing of men? And then I'm going to attack on does it happen in the same way? What do we call it when it's men instead of women? Well, with femicide, we're looking specifically at gender-based violence against women. Mm -hmm. And women disproportionately experience gender-based violence. Women disproportionately experience domestic violence, intimate partner violence, and sexual violence. So this is a, an area that has to be specifically studied and it needs specific responses. And for that reason, we need specific names 
for these experiences and for the things that are happening so that we can properly address them. So if we get to a point where men are disproportionately um, killed on the basis of their sex or gender, then we would need to name that. Today, we're not there. And I think one of the most important things that Audra mentioned during her session when we were exploring this theme is that at the root of femicide is misogyny. At the root of femicide is patriarchy. And so um, these are things that privilege men, right? They're contempt for women um, as living in societies that give them a certain amount of power or control over the resources available, right? These are things that are affecting women specifically, not men. Absolutely. Um, let me give out the uh, call numbers and the text line again. Uh, you can text us on Guardian Radio text line. That's uh, 422-GR96. That's 422-4796. That's powered by BTC. Standard text rates apply. You can call us at 323-6232-325-4316 or 325-4259. Ladies, I have a call on the line. Let's go to that call. Caller, you're on the clock. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, Katie. Good morning. Um, just quickly, Aaron, I just want to ask an observation to see how best we could have broaden this discussion. Mm-hmm. Um, when you're talking um, violence, and I don't condone no thoughts of violence, but mm-hmm. when you're talking violence, um, shouldn't be brought into conversation. Um, is gender, is domestic violence gender neutral? Shouldn't it be gender neutral? As but, opposed to just targeting men and making it seem of men that men are the only perpetrators to, to domestic violence. Um, you have persons who, in civil unions, who know all sorts of different things. They also are abusive to their same-sex partners. Let's broaden the conversation so we can get, if we really want to get, men involved. You know, because if I'm being targeted as the perpetrator, you know, we're not going to get nowhere. Let me give you another example. I don't support marital rape, and it's in, it based on the way the myopic way it is being discussed in the Bahamas. Shouldn't, shouldn't these same women who are pushing for marital rape, do you believe, let me ask them, do you believe the penalty for a spouse who rapes his wife and a woman who lies about it, do you believe the penalty should be equal? Okay, pause here. Here's, here's, here's what I'm going to say. Do you believe a spouse that rapes their partner? Let's make it gender neutral across the board, yeah. right? Do you, do you believe the penalty should be? Because, equal? because I think that's, that's rooted in the idea that women are going to be vindictive and only use this. No, it ain't got to matter. Do we just, I mean, just forget about the vindictiveness. Let's see if you're pushing it for penalties, shouldn't the penalty for someone who lies be equal so we can make sure that everybody is protected? No, that, that doesn't protect everybody. I mean, I feel you're uh, looking... No, f- no, 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 I know. What I'm saying is I understand the need to ensure that everyone is, has equal and equitable access and protection. I get that, right? I, yeah. we, we get that part. But um, I just don't understand why you also... No, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying nothing. I'm just I trying just... to see how best. If, 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 if you see, see the law, this is what the law says. He who comes with equity must first come with clean hands. If my hands are clean, I have no problem with that. If my hands are clean. And then when I look at what happened in the parliament yesterday, Aaron, I found that behavior to be repugnant. I can tell you why. We have the little girl who was brutally murdered. Mm-hmm. And many scores of children were brutally murdered um, over the years. But according to the interview, what I heard on radio, it indicated that that little child tried to run away. She asked the neighbor if she could live there. That's mm-hmm. a four-year-old child, you know, mm-hmm. who, 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 who wanted to run away. Now, when you want to hijack a court, I think the parliament yesterday, that should have been a place where laws should have been a serious discussion should have been had to make sure that whatever happened to that child never, ever happened to him. And the father and members of his extended family, laws should have been put in. The discussion should have been had at this time, at this time to make sure 
that no other father would have experienced with that biological father and members of the extended okay. family. All right, I got you. Because I got to go. I got child for, from two weeks. I know. I got to go. And I appreciate, I appreciate what you're saying. I can show you a vibe. I, um, I got to get back to this conversation. I wanted to hear what you had to say, and I wanted to give you a space to say it, right? Because um, I, could, I could hear the passion, and I could hear a, 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 sin, a, sin, a sincere concern. Let me show you a vibe. You hear what you said at the end there just now? The, that uh, we could have been passing laws and we're thinking about the father. Look here, all I am concerned about is preserving the dignity of the child. Right? All I'm concerned about is preserving the dignity of the child. And this is sort of where we get lost. We as men and women continually, you know, we fighting to make sure we get what is ours and what is deserved to us. And, 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 and this is a perfect instance to show that most of the time we miss the point when we fight in each other, men versus women. We miss the point. And in this particular instance, it's not about the mother's right. It's not about the father's right to the child, to the body of the child, to justice. It's about preserving the dignity of the child. It's what's in the best interest of the child. And both men, both mother and father, were unable to put that aside for the sake of the child, right? And, and, and in this instance, even in your reconciling of marital law, marital rape laws, or the lack thereof, and, and the concern for men, I think we, we're missing the point. It's not about, there, yeah, go on, go on, sorry, come in, come in. There, there was a lot in there in, in what the caller said, mm -hmm. and in these instances, there has never been a time that we have been able to go on a radio show that takes texts and calls uh -huh. to talk about gender-based violence against women or any issue that affects women, much less affects women disproportionately, where someone does not disrupt that conversation or try to disrupt that conversation by putting the focus on men yeah. and making it seem as though men are being excluded from the conversation. Right. We're living in a patriarchal society where men hold a significant amount of power and people can debate this all day long. Um, and we need to have spaces and we need to have conversations where we center women and girls and the experiences that we're having disproportionately, um, the vulnerability that we are in and our high risk as compared to men mm -hmm. of experiencing violence, of experiencing violence based on the fact that we are women right. based on the fact that we are girls. We have to be able to have these conversations and men need to join the conversation, need to understand that this is disproportionately affecting us. Yes, it's also um, an issue that men, men are also experiencing violence, sure. But the only time to talk about that is not when we're talking about women. Right. And I think that conversation is never initiated on its own. Right. But we have taken the time to plan an event just for men to talk about gender-based violence and their own experiences. And it's happening this evening at, at 6 p.m. Right, featuring Laggy from Fiji, Dominic Duncombe, and Stephen Thompson, right? Yes. Right, three phenomenal men. I, I, and I want to say this is that I could hear that man and I could hear other men saying, you know, thank you for sort of raising our concerns. I want men to, to, to say this, like, you may feel like you're being blamed for hundreds and hundreds of years of oppression against women. And how could you bear that weight? You're only 45, you're only 30, you're only 15, right? Why, why are these women blaming me for something I couldn't possibly be in control of? But it's important for men to understand where they are located in not just the community in relation to these women, but in a broader context, a historic context, where men stand and why, why you feel like this when women are talking about their issues and how to moderate that feeling, how to understand it, process it, and moderate it, and understand these women aren't blaming me personally for 200 years of oppression, nor are they ignoring what's happening to me now in the real time they're just carving out a space for a specific conversation. Exactly. And I think, you know, it's also not about blaming individual men, like you said, but 
they do have to look at where they are located within systems of power. Mm -hmm. And, you know, saying things like, oh, let's make it gender neutral um, distracts from the conversation that we are trying to have. If men were similarly affected by gender-based violence in the way that women were, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have to run this campaign. Right. And, you know, it would, it would have been addressed already. Right. And, you know, in a similar way, you know, men get they like stunned when I say to them, look here, you say you is man, but you can't figure out how to stop at a stop sign. Right. Or at a red light. You, you, you don't understand why I'm so upset at you for that. But the man that doesn't that doesn't stop at the red light or the stop sign is not modeling respect for boundaries, personal discipline, self-control mindfulness. He's not modeling these behaviors in his community, and thus he is uh, either, you know, perpetuating or allowing an environment in which it can be perpetuated. Other cultures that don't respect boundaries, like the rape culture and the gang culture and the negative parenting cultures that we see popping up. And so men get upset at me when I say, big here, big man, stop at the stop sign. Stop playing. They get upset, and they have to bring it into context for them. It's more than just a woman telling you to be man. I'm trying to show you the role that you play in the community and why it's important. All right, so on that same note, if, let's talk about why it's important to shift the focus when we're talking about violence against women and girls, why it's important to shift the focus from the perpetrator to the survivor. Guys still there? Yes. Uh, so we sorry, had a really interesting conversation on Saturday with three women. And when the question came up about centering survivors, there was so much passion and what they were talking about. And one person in particular identified herself as a survivor and really echoed some of the ideas that we have been sharing at Equality Bahamas and some of the sentiments that have been shared with us by survivors that we work with on a regular basis, that our response to gender-based violence, including rape, including domestic violence and intimate partner violence, is often focused on the perpetrator. So we saw it, for example, with the case of, of Bella, right, where there was all, this, all these calls for different things, death penalty, increased penalties, castration, um, the sex offenders registry, all these different demands that really amount to punishment after this thing has already occurred and still leaves a survivor in the same place. So our response needs to focus on prevention and it also needs to focus on justice for the survivor mm -hmm. and centering their healing. And that is not necessarily just punishing the perpetrator. So survivors, for example, to be able to leave and to be able to stay out of uh, abusive situations and relationships and households need to have sufficient money. They need to have childcare. They need to be sure that their job is secure, um, that they'll be able to attend court proceedings and things like that without being penalized at work. That's why we talk about domestic violence at work and how the workplace needs to conform and needs to make certain concessions for people. Um, so, you know, all of these things are, are linked, but we need to focus far more on survivors and exactly what they need and ensure that whatever our response is, it's leaving them better off. Absolutely. So I got some, uh, let's get to this caller and then we're going to finish out the show with some text to respond to. Caller, you're on the clock. Good morning, David. This is Doc on the voice along with you for the eye, Aaron Green. Good morning, Bremen. Now look here. Uh, you heard the conversation. Yeah. You see uh, who I have on the show, right? We'll be talking about. Okay. How you doing? I'm all in. Good uh, bless. First, I want to say we need justice, law, and order in this, this country. Yep. Earlier, you spoke of from um, how uh, nobody had spoke to the situation whereby the profit, uh, the property on par Paradise Island had went for so little, right? Right. Oh, no, people have been talking about it. And I, and yeah. I mentioned it this morning, but I got to go. I'm I running yeah, out of what time. What I want to say is, right? Yeah. We don't have much real man in this country. And we talking about those, those that's in authority to those that are on the street. Not much. They're very much uh, emasculated. 
Okay, now, Brayman, I can tell you, when you say they're very much emasculated, I can tell you, imperialism have a way of doing that to you. Anyway, I got to go. Let me get to these texts. I got a text in here. Who I must have to invite on this show, man. First of all, he says, Stephen and Dominique are the, were the very best performing actors from Jordan Prince William School. That's awesome. That's awesome. Another text here says, is there a focus on the positive things happening to women and by and for women? Uh, there are more and more women. Okay, I don't... Women threaten men. Please come hang out by common public places, even transacting brief legitimate business at night. Women also run the red light. Please. Uh, I mean, here's what I was saying, though, for men that demand that they be seen, heralded, and treated as chief. They got to behave like chiefs. Another text. Good morning, Miss Green and your guest. Baby Bella didn't even carry her dad's last name. That is something to think about. It's another conversation to have. We must do it respectfully. Uh, but yes, um, to interrogate the extent to which Bella's father understood what he could do. What he could do. Morning, do you think then this is why men are not coming forward with complaints because we feel that society doesn't give enough attention to men being abused? As a people, we see violence again against men and women differently. No, I think men are not coming forward because there's a stigma surrounding it. Both men and women will make fun of a man who says that he is being abused. I had a very good friend, a neighbor, who's being abused by his girlfriend and then wife. And he refused to hit that woman, and she did terrible things to him. And her family members saw it happening and refused to step in and moderate her behavior. He had to take his children and run, and he's taking care of them. And it, the truth is, is that she had mental health issues that were being ignored also. You see how complicated this thing is. Okay, we are out of text. Uh, for the wait, one more text. No more load shedding. The port project continues. The dumping on fire and totally revamped tourism still booming. Small business development centers still doing well, but Minnes is a failure. I don't see any winter mangoes. You see winter mangoes? I don't see any winter mangoes. Minnes is a failure. Anyway, Miss Wallace and Miss Glinton from Equality Bahamas, thank you so much for joining me this morning. I think we may have to continue the conversation because there were a lot of issues in the text and questions that we need to interrogate and explore. So maybe I could have you guys back on before the end of 16 Days of Activism. Thank you, Erin. Yes, sure. And for folks who are looking for all of the events, please go to tiny.cc slash go16. That's tiny.cc slash go16. All the details are there. Absolutely. Arlington, I want you to play that so song, Courthouse Scandal, the where you left off as we close out and I can read this very last text. It says, great show as usual. Now that Glennis Hannah Martin is the PM, could you ask her if she could defer my mortgage payment until February? Uh, also, could you ask her if she could remove the VAT for the next two weeks? Boy, Glennis, look here. How many days you have? You got like two days without Brave? You have a meeting with you. Let's go talk. Let's talk. Anyway, you guys have a great day. 16 days of activism. It's 11 a.m. Levon Miller is up next. That means you're all going to have a great day, Bahamas. Just stay tuned to Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. She say, my honor, he kicked me up. They hold him, he wouldn't stop. Murder, I start to ball. 